Hi guys and welcome back. Uh, my name is Steve. I'm here with Fitness HQ and today uh, the topic is going to be level 3 endocrine system. Um, so we're going to be looking at different hormones throughout the body, different glands that are producing these hormones and what the roles of the hormones are. So uh, throughout this topic there's three sort of key things that we need to learn at the end of it. So we've got the, the, the gland itself, the endocrine gland, uh, where it's located uh, the, the hormone of the hormones that are produced um, through that gland and also the roles of those hormones as well. So they're like your three key topics that are the, the things to know really for this section. Uh, so again, in terms of objectives there, if you want to have a quick read through we get, uh, before we get going. If not, uh, we're going to go straight on to the actual glands um, and the endocrine system itself. Now, the endocrine system might be a relatively unknown term to you. It might be a system that you've not really heard of before. Uh, and essentially, as, as we've kind of already mentioned, it's through the hormones. Um, now, a hormone is a chemical messenger, so it, it, it's related very much towards the nervous system as well. So, whereas the nervous system is very fast impulses uh, through electrical stimuli, uh, the endocrine system is much, much slower. It's through chemical messengers that are transported through the blood from one cell to another, uh, and each hormone has a different role within the body. Now, if we look at the... Um, the glands themselves. We'll start from the top and sort of work our way down. Um, we've got the pineal gland and the hypothalamus, which we're not going to get into too much detail about for the time being. Uh, then we've got the pituitary gland, the thyroid, uh, the thymus, pancreas, adrenal. Uh, down at the bottom, we've got the uh, male and female sex hot, uh, glands as well. So we've got the testes and we've got the ovaries down there as well. Um, now, the one I'm going to start off with is the pituitary gland. and um, the reason why I've got the roles here, I suppose, um, if we wanted to have a little bit more of a look at the roles. Um, look at the pituitary gland. So it, it's, it's, in the, it's at the base of the brain, and if you think about it, it's like the size of a pea, so it's, it's pretty small, really. Um, and it's, its main role, really, is it's often referred to as the master gland. Uh, and the reason why it's called the master gland is because it, it sort of, it's like the manager of the, the hormonal system. It, it, it sort of regulates everything, makes sure everything's doing its job correctly, the right amount of hormones are being produced in the right amount of glands. Um, and the, uh, the, the main hormone that this produces is the uh, growth hormone, which we'll come on to shortly as well. Uh, there you go, it says size would be, um, and we can um, split it into the, the two sections, so anterior and posterior. Okay guys, so we're going to move slightly down now to the pancreas, uh, whereby it releases insulin and glucagon. Uh, these are the two hormones that are responsible for blood sugars. Um, so, uh, generally our blood sugars come from our carbohydrate sources, so as we take in carbohydrates, they're broken down into glucose and then it's transported into the bloodstream. Um, and uh, they have quite a, opposite responsibilities, you could say. Um, let's have a look at insulin first then. Uh, what happens then when, when you take in carbohydrates, especially an excessive amount of carbohydrates, uh, your body then sends it to the blood and your blood sugars will rise. Um, now, when your blood sugars rise, insulin is uh, secreted from the pancreas into the bloodstream and um, it will be then dispersed uh, to the cells in the body. In, in most cases, they're going to be going to the muscles. Um, now, the, the issue is when we, not, when we have like a constantly poor diet and we're not doing enough exercises, the muscles are already full of, of, of sugars um, uh, stored as glycogen. Um, so because this is the case, insulin sort of knocks on the door um, and the inn is full, I suppose you could say, is, is, what, is what the answer is from the muscles. Um, so the insulin isn't allowing to get, or isn't allowed to get the sugars into the muscle. And as a result, blood sugars tend to rise uh, and when that resistance in the muscles occurs, that's when diabetes, or type 2 diabetes, tends to kick in. Uh, and as a result, what happens is a lot of the excess calories that we've got and the, the excess sugars we've got tend to get stored then as fats throughout the body. Uh, and then, you know, we start to gain weight um, and the process keeps sort of getting, getting more and more. Um, so, uh, in blue there, you can see insulin, the main job is to lower um, blood glucose levels through uh, eating carbohydrates. Uh, glucagon on the opposite hand then is what helps us to increase blood sugar levels. So like I just mentioned before about glucagon, um, 
uh, and, and glycogen, sorry, it, it's stored within the muscles. Um, and roughly about 75% of our stored sugars, or our stored glycogen, is within the muscles. Uh, however, there's about 25% there and thereabouts extra that we tend to store in the liver. Now, when, when we're on a restriction of carbohydrates, uh, the body needs to find some glycogen from somewhere. So what happens is glucagon comes along uh, and it basically um, it creates, uh, it, it goes and finds this glycogen from the liver uh, and it helps us to then utilize that as an energy source. So it helps to increase our blood sugar levels and get them sugars to the muscles so we can use them for, for, for our energy sources. Um, so that's the difference between insulin and glucagon. Uh, moving a little bit further down, we've got the adrenal glands. Uh, now, the adrenal glands are actually sitting on top of your kidneys. So you've got two glands, one on either kidney, uh, and they just sit on that little domes. Um, and the main hormone that the adrenals produce, or the couple of hormones really, we'll talk about the first one in adrenaline. Uh, as you can see, it's often referred to as epinephrine as well. Now, uh, adrenaline has a little sidekick as well called non-adrenaline or norepinephrine and they do very similar jobs. Um, we, we, the type of, or the category of hormone we call it, the catecholamines, um, and basically it's, it's in that sort of fight or flight response in that um, if, if we're under high amounts of stress, we're in a competitive situation for example, um, the adrenal glands will produce catecholamines uh, and as a result we'll get increased blood pressure, we'll get increased heart rates, um, we'll get increased flow to the muscles uh, and also it's going to help with our mental alertness, our concentration uh, it's going to get our mind focused for whatever the task in hand might be it might be to do a, a sprint, it could be to run a marathon uh, it could be in the gym lifting weights um, so that's the main purpose for the adrenaline um, like I said, the, the hypothalamus, or, which is your, your sort of brain's control centre uh, it almost it, it triggers that response, I suppose you could say. So it has a quite an important role in, in that adrenaline release as well. Um, a couple of um, little um, causes of adrenaline release here. We've got increased heart rate, which I've mentioned. Stroke volume, which we should know now about the amount of blood that the heart's beating. Um, elevation of blood glucose levels as well, because if we're in times of stress and competitive nature, we're going to need energy quickly. So naturally, we want to try and get glucose into the blood ready to be used. Um, uh, redistribution of blood to the working tissues, so it's going to help with dilation of certain arteries and constriction of other arteries leading to cells that we're not really using. Uh, and it's also going to help open up the airways as well, so it's going to allow us to bring more oxygen in, utilise more oxygen and get that carbon dioxide out quicker as well. Um, next one then I suppose we can come back to uh, the other hormones shortly um, in regards to the, the adrenals. Uh, we're going to move a little bit further down now. Uh, we've got testosterone, um, naturally it's produced in the testes um, and it's made, I suppose you say the main job is to generally give us our male characteristics. Um, um, as you can see here, males tend to produce up to 10 times more testosterone than females which is quite a key thing to understand really because a lot of girls go into the gym and they don't like doing weights because they think they're going to get big. Uh, well, it's not really possible because of the lack of uh, testosterone that they're able to produce um, and it's much, much harder for a, for a girl to get bigger than it is for a guy purely because of the amount of testosterone that they produce. Um, obviously, it has lots of different roles in the body as well. It helps, it's, a, it's, you know, it's an anabolic hormone, which means it's a building hormone. Uh, it's going to help with um, increasing muscle size, it's going to help with our bone strength and you know, much other things as well. So um, lots of different roles in the body with testosterone. Estrogen on the other hand um, is, the, is the female sex hormone. Naturally it gives females uh, their, their sex characteristics you could say. Um, generally uh, it's produced in the ovaries uh, and again the, the sort of main role for estrogen is um, Things like bone density in particular, uh, female characteristics, uh, storage of fat in, in the sort of reproductive areas in women. Um, and uh, what you tend to find is that with, with estrogen and testosterone, uh, males and females uh, will produce small amounts of the opposite ones as well, uh, primarily from the adrenal glands. So um, we, we tend to find that a female will produce small amounts of testosterone um, from the adrenals. Um, 
and so will be with estrogen in males as well. So obviously in much smaller quantities, but it's still there. Um, like I said, uh, reproductive system naturally we have lots more estrogen uh, as it facilitates that whole process. Uh, and as a result, uh, it influences um, higher fats as well. So women have a much higher fat percentage than males, um, partly due to that reason. Uh, going back to the adrenals then, uh, we've got cortisol coming up next. Um, now we mentioned with the adrenals, the, the catecholamines. Uh, now that's from one section of the adrenals. Uh, now the other section of the adrenals produces what we call corticosteroids, uh, i.e. the steroid hormones. Um, in particular cortisol being the, the main one and it, it, it's often referred to as a catabolic i.e. It's a, it's a hormone that breaks things down um, and what, what generally happens is this we call this the, the stress hormone you could say uh, in that it, it's, 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 uh, if we're under stress, if we're exercising uh, cortisol is the main hormone that's sort of regulating our, our, um, our calorie uh, our metabolism and making sure that we've got the energy uh, for our exercises. Um, under times of stress as well, um, uh, we can get inflammation occur. Uh, one of the main roles, I suppose, of cortisol is to, is to reduce inflammation. Um, and as a result, it can have a, a, a catabolic effect on the body. And we can sometimes produce too much cortisol as well. Um, we actually wake up in the morning with high levels of cortisol. So, uh, mornings is another good reason why we want to start the day well because uh, starting the day well, getting a good breakfast, being active naturally is going to help sort of reduce cortisol levels. Uh, and through exercise as well, uh, during exercise and just after cortisol tends to get much higher um, as, it's, as it's regulating our uh, nutrient in, uh, utilization that we've got there. Uh, and in general, it's got a few different points here about high levels of cortisol and what the effects of it can be. So, um, it can cause stress, uh, it can cause poor sleep, um, natural in, inadequate nutrition, um, breakdown of muscle tissue, which is a big one in the gym. Um, as I said, going back to that catabolic phase, if the body needs to utilise proteins as an energy source, it's going to take the protein from the muscle. Um, and you know, there's, there's a bunch of different side effects as well that comes with it. So in reality, we want to keep our cortisol levels to as minimum as possible, really, to avoid having an, an excess amount of them. Uh, so that's the cortisol. Uh, growth hormone I mentioned before about uh, the, the pituitary gland, um, responsible for all growth in the body, as it kind of suggests in its name. So uh, whether it be our, our hair, our skin, our nails, teeth, muscles, all of the growth that we have through all of our cells is coming through growth hormone production. So it's very much an anabolic hormone, meaning it helps to build uh, and repair. Um, so generally it's, it's much, much higher in childhood as we're growing, uh, but it's also really, really high in sleep as well, in particular deep sleep. So if you, found, if you find that you're not very, very much a deep sleeper, um, you may be struggling to get the required levels of growth hormone throughout the night and it may affect things like recovery um, after gym sessions. Um, stimulated uh, due to things like estrogen and testosterone, deep sleep as I mentioned, vigorous exercise in particular doing um, heavy weight training, um, doing extra sets, things like that is going to really stimulate growth hormone production. Naturally, if your goal is for muscle building, we want higher levels of growth hormone. Um, obviously, things like bones, muscle tissue, protein synthesis. Uh, and it's also, because it's an anabolic hormone, it helps with fat burning as well. Uh, thyroid hormone, this is sort of the, the metabolism regulator. Um, so, thyroid is in the, the, the base of your neck here. Um, and basically what it does is it, is it sort of regulates um, your, your macronutrient utilisation. Um, again here you've got a few different functions, things like pro synthesis of protein, sensitivity to adrenaline, heart rate, even breathing rate. Um, low thyroid production, so thyroid hormone production can actually cause um, weight gain in a lot of people due to uh, the fact it's going to give you less energy. Um, so they make you feel more lethargic. Um, however, it does affect quite a minimum amount of people. Um, parathyroid gland then, is, it's not quite the same as the thyroid gland. 
Uh, if you look from the picture here, you can actually see there's four little points. It's actually attached onto the back of the thyroid gland. Uh, and its main job is to regulate calcium. So we've already mentioned before in the muscular system about how calcium is really important for muscle contraction. Uh, parathyroid glands may ensure there's enough calcium getting to the muscles uh, in order to produce that the required movement that we need. So if we have less calcium, uh, the, body, the, the parathyroid gland will try and find calcium uh, to make sure that we, we have that there readily available. Uh, now, a few effects on the, uh, on the endocrine system for exercise. Uh, main thing is through training generally, it's going to help with things like increasing testosterone and growth hormone, which are massive factors of staying stronger, um, helping with muscle repair. Like I said, if your goal is bodybuilding, it's going to help you get bigger, etc. Uh, now, naturally, through exercise, uh, especially prolonged exercise, however, uh, it can cause an excessive amount of cortisol, which has quite a few negative effects potentially on the body. So, uh, we want to make sure that we're, we're, we're balancing our exercise and our nutrition quite well with that one. Uh, but like I said, it's going to help with facilitating recovery, generally it's going to help with the anti-inflammatory effect. Um, so yeah, like I said, uh, it's all about staying as anabolic as possible really, without being in this, this catabolic phase, as, as little as possible I suppose you could say. Um, and finishing off with that then, um, we've got a few recap questions for you to answer. Uh, on the next slide, there's a few questions to have a go at. Again, um, if you feel like you've got any questions or comments, feel free to pop them below and we'll get right out to a point.